off Lee. And we're going to do some hot takes as well. I've got two crazy hot takes to get Lee's attention on. But we're going to try and keep the sections to a point just so we can get to the end bit without Lily and the rough saying, Lee, stop waffling. <laughs> 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 yeah. Exactly. That's what we're going to try and do. Uh, the first thing I want to ask you, we all know Conte's been sacked. But give me your take on that, though, because he's gone now. They're looking at Nagelsmann. They're looking at Poch. What are you saying, bruv? Um, he was spot on. Everything he said was spot on. And, and I see a lot of fans from other clubs and Tottenham fans saying that he was trying to get sacked. Really? I don't think he was trying to get sacked. He, he's leaving, well, or would have been leaving in what, two months? Two, three months? Yeah. So, yeah. like, he's a multi-millionaire. He don't need the money. I don't think he was trying to get sacked. I think he was just fed up with the the lack of respect he was shown by Tottenham in, in the first instance with the 18-month contract, getting them their ambition, their target of top four, uh, which he which he achieved. Um, they never renewed or offered him a contract, apparently. And they didn't really back him. And people will sit there and say, what are you talking about? Are you chatting rubbish? He spent 200 mil. Well, he didn't, though, did he? Because 50 mil of that was Romero, who they activated the the clause in the contract after the loan. But he was already there before Conte got there. Jed Spence, he didn't want. Um, Benton Core and Kulisevsky, OK, cool. They're probably his players. Perisic is probably his player. 60 mil was spent on the pigeon from Brazil. I don't even think he wanted him, Terry. Right? And, and I worked it out yesterday. I was on a show with Henry, and Henry said about 116, 115 mil is actually what Conte actually wanted to spend or had to spend. But it's been boosted up to like 200-odd million, but it's not his 200 million. Out of that 115 mil, 60 was Richarlison. But at the same time, when he had his nine-minute madness and meltdown, he didn't, um, he didn't make himself accountable. And his tactics at times have stunk. Like bringing on yeah. a defender when you're going to try and win a game against Milan and, you know, putting out a reserve team against Sheffield United, albeit they should be beating Sheffield United even with the reserves. But at the same time, I think a lot of the outrage towards Tottenham, the ownership, the the manager, stems. And, and I believe this, and it's, maybe it's not the whole reason, but it's because we're doing so well and we're top. If we were sixth, well, they're doing what they did last season. Yeah, they're fighting for top four. That's what they do. And I've seen a lot of their fans moaning about, oh, we had a free pass to the cup semi. We would have played championship and league one teams, et cetera, et cetera, which is great. Yeah, cool. But at the same time, you've got no history in my lifetime, really, of ever winning anything. So what makes you think you would have got to the semi anyway? Do you know what, bro? I think what you said about the Arsenal thing is spot on. Arsenal broke Spurs this year. So the fans lost faith. I think Antonio Conte, Almost, even you got to remember what he rejected joining before Nuno came in, and he rejected it because his like ideals, his vision, his ethos was not matched by Tottenham's. And we all know what that meant. They don't want to win as quickly as I do. I think, I think he was hoodwinked. I think he was hoodwinked. He was promised X, and they delivered Y. I think they promised him more players of a certain caliber or age. It isn't even caliber because this guy went and signed Ashley Young as an example to help him win a league title in, in Serie A. He doesn't always want the best players. He wants the right individuals for him. And Tottenham didn't deliver. But he was the wrong choice. And I, you know, I was someone that kind of got swept up in this where I thought, hey, he could do a really good job. But if they back him, Spurs mm. fans, the chest they demonstrated. And we know that Spurs fans lie. Because they say things like we're going to win trophies. And then when they don't, they always blame the players, the same players they had before at the time of making those big claims. It's the right thing to do to get rid of him, though, in my opinion. Yeah. It's about who they get in next. And Nangelsmann is linked. And if Pochettino goes to Real Madrid, which is what so the story is, Poch wanted Tottenham. But now Poch is saying Real Madrid want me. So I'm saying no to you if you come in. So it looks like he's going to reject Tottenham. And Nangelsmann's waiting to see what happens with Real Madrid before he commits to Tottenham. So they may end up with Julian Nangelsmann. Do you think that's a better manager for Tottenham than Poch or, or, or Conte in terms of they're never going to give Conte what he needs to, to, to achieve? Is Nangelsmann a better fit than the other options? It doesn't matter who the manager is, Terry. They're, they're not going to win anything. Like, let's, let's, just have it. let's just have it right. Yeah, I'll say this every single time we talk about Tottenham. They have won four trophies in my lifetime, and I am 41 years old in June. So 
they will gas up Nigelsman, De Zerbi, uh, the lad from um, Sporting. They'll hype up all of these managers. Thomas Frank's name's in the mix. Poch back and all of this. That's my the manager is. They ain't winning nothing. Yeah, there is a, a, a proper issue at that football club, cult- culturally. Yeah, and it's the players. Any, any player who decides to play for Tottenham is basically deciding they don't want to win anything. Like, that's, that's it. Look at Lucas Moura. Lucas Moura, I think, has won more than Tottenham Football Club. He's gone to Tottenham and won nothing. And then, and then they want to blame him. Oh, yeah, but he's rubbish. How is he still at the club? Mate, he's bigger than your football club. He's won more than your football club. It doesn't matter who the manager is, Terry. But what they'll do is they'll hype up Nigelsman, who, in my opinion, bang average. Yeah, like his football stinks. Yeah, and because he's 35 years old, he got the buy-in job, rocks up on a skateboard. Uh, everyone gets hyped. Oh, he changes formation, upside down Christmas tree, inverted Christmas tree. For who cares, mate? Can you win? Yeah, and, and people, people will hype that up at Tottenham. Like, oh yeah, this is the process, the project. Look at Arteta, what he's done at Arsenal. Look at look at Klopp. It's okay, nah, mate. Come on, this is Tottenham. Yeah, it doesn't in Tottenham. You you brought up the graphic a couple of weeks ago. They have spent more money in the Premier League than Arsenal have. So it doesn't matter who the manager is. There is a, a deep-rooted issue at that football club, and that stems from Joe Lewis. That comes from Daniel Levy. It comes all the way down to the players, the board, the ownership, like the managers they bring in. Jose, serial winner. Conte, serial winner. Still not won nothing. Yeah, and, and they sacked Jose five days before a cup final because they didn't want to pay him any extra if he'd won it. That is the mentality of that football club. And until their fans stop hyping up mediocrity and stop going round and around on this little roundabout of, oh, yeah, we'll get this manager in. It'll be a process. Bring some youth players through. Incorporate the good players. Yeah, and we'll build something that might come to fruition in four years. And then in three and a half years' time, they'll all want him sacked. Like, what's the point? Until they change that mentality of their football club and make it a winning mentality, which comes from either the fan base or the ownership or both together, they ain't, they ain't never going to do anything, Terry. They're, they're the nearly club. They're, they're nearly good. And, and you know what? Daniel Levy is amazing at business. Fair play to the guy. He's absolutely quality at what he's doing off the pitch. But at the same time, he has mastered the fact that you can qualify for Champions League and you don't have to win anything and you can make a shit ton of money. If you win the, I said this yesterday, if you win the FA Cup and the League Cup, I think you get prize money wise for a cup double, about six, seven mil. If you qualify for Champions League, every win in the group stage is five mil. Why do they want to compete for trophies? They don't. Mm. And he's mastered that. And Tottenham fans have been suckered into that. And what they'll do, they'll get Nigelsman in or Pochin or De Zerbi, a nice little hipsters manager that are go and spank Burnley 6 0, go and spank, I don't know, Luton 7 0. And then they'll get Pam 6 or 7 in a couple of games. And it'll be, oh, but it's a process, it's a project. <laughs> round and round they go. But, mate, and I, I couldn't agree with you more on your point around what they've spent. So in, in, since the Premier League began, 1.3 billion spent by Arsenal, 31 trophies won. Spurs, 1.5 billion spent. Seven, no, that can't be right. Sorry, since since sorry, uh, one point. No, I'm a liar here. Sorry, ignore the trophy <laughs> bit. No, because someone's put in the big six most spend since club was founded. Someone's wrote that put it wrong it's in the Premier League era. But you've spent 1.3 billion. You've won three Premier Leagues, umpteen FA Cups, done two two doubles. Two doubles in that time. Yeah. Spurs have spent 1.5 billion and they've won two league cups. And it's it's embarrassing. And I think for me, I think Nangelsman's a good fit for them. And I'll tell you why I think he's a good fit. Because he will give them what they what the majority of their club truly wants. He will make the football pretty. It will be fashionable and quirky, so the media will love them. And Spurs fans just all they want is praise. And he will get them every now and then into top four. So they're ticking that box. But because he's not an established manager with a massive CV, there won't be this pressure on them to win. Spurs fans want to be praised for looking good and they want no pressure to win. And a manager like Julian Nagelsmann, I think, will do that. I really do think he would deliver for Tottenham what they truly want at their core. They can't have managers like Jose, Jurgen Klopp, Ten Hag, managers who only want to win. You know, they can't have players, really, that only want to win. Every top Spurs player in the last, and and Harry Kane may buck that trend, but every top player that has joined Spurs in my lifetime has left to go and try and win trophies. They've (laughs) all done it. They've all done it. And the ones that don't have the ambition to win trophies stay. 
or are not good enough to go and win trophies at the biggest football clubs. And I feel sorry for some Spurs fans because you've got Sava who comes on our show. He wants to win. Expressions wants to win. We have some of our viewers, Jerome and young Daniel. They just want to win. They don't care about all the superbatifs and the 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 kind of the, the the style over substance nonsense that so many Spurs fans are addicted to. They are addicted to looking like their their quality as opposed to being quality. I'd rather have a broke down stadium that leaks but win trophies than the best stadium in the world and no and with and an empty trophy cabinet. But on the, on the flip yet. side of that, though, Terry, right? If they're only going to achieve top four every season, would you rather achieve it by watching entertaining football or boring football? Oh, by that logic, yes. So, so I, that, I get why they want that no, because and I, they're I, never going to compete for a title. And I, and I agree with you, but it gives them exactly what they want. And if you go, if you're only gonna, if you're only gonna qualify for the top four, then at least do it by entertaining people. I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more on that. But this is why they're never going to be. They will always be the lesser of the top six clubs. They will always be baby bro. They will never. But how are they even considered top, top six? I don't get it. Like they don't win anything, Terry. Who who shoehorned this club into top six? Like if you look at the other five clubs, Man you know, City, you can say, yeah. oh, before money they were nothing. Whatever, cool. But since money, they've achieved pretty much everything other than the Champions League. Chelsea achieved everything. Most successful club last twenty years. Man United we, and Liverpool, we don't even need to mention. Arsenal, the same. Who shoehorned this little club that don't win anything into uh, the mix? Because Leicester have won more than them. They've won an FA Cup in the league in the Premier League era. Tottenham have won two League Cups. Like, make it make sense. Like, well, even this... Wigan have won an FA Cup. I, th I think it's based on, partly, I, a lot of the time it's based on size of fan base and clubs turnover. I, th I honestly think that's what the media base it on. And I, look, I've kind of, my, my, my channel is based on the top six and it includes Tottenham. But I do think we're at a point where Newcastle is going to be added to that. You know, it's, it, they're going to come in. Are what we're going to start saying top seven. That doesn't quite have the same ring to it. It's not a round number. <laughs> Should be top moving, five. <laughs> well, if you, start, if you start moving toward top eight, you might as well say, Fantastic well, the top table then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't quite know the, the way round it's going to go. But yeah, look, I, I think Pochettino is going to reject them for Real Madrid. There's not, I mean, first, I will say this. What are Real Madrid thinking bringing Poch in? I don't understand it. Mate, that, that, it that, must be, that must be Pochettino's like PR team putting that out there, mate, because that club, if they employ him, I will make this announcement right now and I'll just say this. If they sign him in the summer, it'll be gone by Christmas. <laughs> I'm being straight up. Mate, you're going in there with Modric, Cruz. Benzema's going to sign a new deal for a one-year extension. Yeah, you're going in there with Danny Carvajal, Nacho, Courtois, Militao, David Alaba. They've got some serial winners at that football club, yeah? And he's going to go in there and call he's managed PSG and he won a few trophies at PSG. But he's going to go in there and they're going to think, well, hang on a minute, mate. We've, we've had Ancelotti. We've had Jose. <laughs> like All the other managers they've had as well. And now we've got him. Like, what are you going to teach us? They've had Zidane winning multiple trophies. Like, what is he actually... No, nah, I, I do not believe Florentino Perez is that stupid. Yeah, I've, I've seen Real Madrid just get better and better and better and, and maintain the levels and, and surpass the levels, yeah? I, if they got... I, I know they signed Lopetegui. I know they've signed other managers, but they realised very quickly with their managers. Sack. Lopetegui lasted 14 games. They sacked him. Poch will be gone by Christmas if they sign him. I don't think he'll sign him. They need a marquee manager and a marquee sign-in this summer because they haven't signed a marquee sign-in since Hazard. Oh, Eden Real Madrid. Hazard. Sorry, for a second yeah. there, I was thinking Tottenham. I was like, Tottenham didn't sign Hazard, did they? No, no, no. Sorry, sorry, Eden sorry, sorry. Hazard was the last big yeah, no, marquee you, sign-in right. they've I, made. I think, I think Poch would be... Look, I, I don't actually think Nangelsmann is overrated as much as you do. I think, he, I think there's a manager in there. I just think he's a very young manager. I think Bayern Munich came too early for him. I think that that he needed to build himself up more. And not even from a, a knowledge point of view, there is a thing that, there's a respect thing. And I know he's older than some of the squad, but he's so, he's, he's 34 years old, I think. There is almost 30, an element. 35. 35. 35. There's, there's almost an element of maybe needing to be a little bit older, but I think there's a good manager in there. I would want Nagelsmann at my club over Poch, who is a serial loser, who lost, in one season he had at, at, at PSG, he lost a one-horse race. That's like me. Looking how I look, entering a beauty competition, <laughs> being the only contestant in it, 
and coming second. Imagine that you come second in a beauty contest where you're where the, where you're the only one in it. It's cra- it, honestly, it's crazy to so me. It's yeah. almost like when Les Dennis pulled all, um, Amanda Holden, isn't it? Amanda it's Holden. Like, how did you manage that, mate? <laughs> <laughs> the survey says. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, mate, but that's that's the thing. Like, Potch has got, I think he's got very good agents. I think they sell themselves brilliantly. Like, what's his name? Is I, I can't believe he managed Belgium so long. Roberto Martinez, Martinez reminds mm. me of Potch. It's almost, he gets you playing pretty football. The better the, the unit of players he's got, the better they perform. But they will always fail in the end. They'll always... That's why, that's why I don't rate managers like Nigelsmann. Now, Nigelsmann... Is like and at the moment, the Zerbi's the flavor of the month. Oh, Brighton, look at what Brighton are doing. Yeah, Brighton have never won a trophy in 122 years, Terry. So they can play all this great football, they don't they don't care. They're like, and and then their owner is making an absolute fortune. He is basically a smaller version of Daniel Levy, yeah, because he's selling players for ridiculous profit and not reinvesting it, and then going to get another cheap little sign in, sell him on for 80 yeah. mil. And so, but eventually, what happens is that comes to an end. Right, and then you end up like Southampton because Southampton went through this. Oh, look at Southampton's academy, and now they're bottom of the table because eventually you run out of that. But these types of managers are like, look at what he did in Italy, De Zerbi and Shakhtar, great football. Roberto Martinez, small clubs, great football. That Nigelsman, yeah, is so overrated, it is insane. Yeah, and if he comes to Tottenham, maybe it is a good fit because they're a shitty little club, and he's an average manager. Yeah, but like you said, the footballer looked good. But when he went to, to Bayern, you have to win. You have to get all of them players on side that have been there, serial winners for decades. You have to get the board of serial winners, legends of that club on side. And you have to win everything or at least compete to the death for everything. His football last season was shocking. Yeah, but the league is shocking, which is why he won it. This season, they've got even worse, which is why they're second. Because everyone else has caught up a little bit more. Well, this is this is this is the thing. The guy here that's actually commenting that says, uh, "How are you judging him based on PSG? Look at all the managers PSG have had zero ball knowledge." But AJ, I'm not <laughs> just judging him based on PSG. I'm judging him on what I've seen in his entire career. But I'm using that as a case and point. I can also point out to you that in the one title race season he was in with Tottenham against Leicester, he came third. He even bottled coming second in that season. I can also show you when he pulled off a miraculous run to get to a Champions League final. They're in that final and they did not lay a glove on a pretty average Liverpool on the night. He put in an injured, lame Harry Kane and left out a hat-trick hero from the previous round who was in the form of his life. You can look at the FA Cup semi-final against Chelsea where they were absolutely battered from pillar to post. You can look at the League Cup final where, again, they did not lay a glove in that final. So you can point to some really big games. You can look at title races in the Premier League. And you can look at how how they all fell away. And there is a very, very similar narrative in all of them. A lack of cojones, a lack of ability to get a team over the line. So that's my ball knowledge for you, my friend. Um, I don't need to give you, when I'm making a point, most people will understand based on an example what I'm what I'm referring to. You saying zero ball knowledge isn't an argument, but I thought I would react. 